Hello, in this section we'll be diving deeper into Redux and we'll be creating Redux actions and then finally communicating with the backend using React, Redux and Kotlin. We'll dispatch Redux actions from React components by mapping Redux actions to our React components as props. Then we'll create Redux reducers and asynchronous Redux actions and see how that works with a synchronous world of Redux. After that, we'll wrap the window.fetch xhr function and its promises to Kotlin coroutines and finally communicate with the backend and start saving and fetching the data from our backend and displaying that on the frontend side of the application. In this video, we'll be dispatching actions from React components. We'll extract services and action creators for Redux and create a reducer functions to manage Redux state. After that, we'll map dispatch functions to our components and refactor the components to use action dispatchers. Previously, we you did map state to props lambda within our connected router component. That ended with our hash mapping and now I have modified the router component to take in current project and project list as props also. I have also modified the router component even further and made it into a stateless component altogether. So it takes in three additional props, all of them being functions. The first one update action, the second clear action, and the third one a submit action. I've also modified our form and project list mappings. So instead of using the set state function, we are just passing our props as update, submit and clear methods to the form. To make all of this work, we need to modify our router component and the connect call that we are doing in that. So we'll need to map our dispatch functions from Redux store into our router component. But before we can do that, let's refactor the index a little bit. So we have a Redux create store call within here and we are creating a reducer function as an inline function to this store. Now we'll get rid of that and we'll extract our reducer function to its own Kotlin file. I have created a new package called store in here and to that store package will create a new Kotlin file called main reducer. This main reducer will contain all the actions we want to do within our Redux loop. So that function looks like this and as you can see it is fairly straightforward copy and paste from the actual inline function that we had in our index and we'll add the function reference in here so we are passing all the all the uh, reducing actions to our main reducer function we also create have created a new actions class or file in here so this class contains an enum class and a bunch of data classes the enum is our action type and the data classes will be the payload of our actual action. As you saw, we have three actions all together that we have are doing in the form. So we'll need to add three actions to our action type enum. Those actions are listed here and two of them contain a payload. The form submit and form input are those that contain the payload. Form clear knows that we just want to remove the current project from our Redux store class. The payload for form input is value and target pair. And the form submit input or payload is just a project object that we are passing in into our reducer. The store now contains mo the, both of our project list and the current project, so it replaced the state from our router component. Now that we have the actions available for us, we can start modifying 
our main reducer to add, add those remaining branches in there. The first new when clause branch is form submit. And for that, we'll be doing doing a submitting of the form. So we add the project that is coming in as a payload to the list of projects that we have in the state. So we'll cast the payload into form submit action type or a payload object type, and then add that new project and the project uh, property from there into our project list. And finally, we'll replace the project list with the new list and also replace the current project with a project identity, which returns an empty project object for us. With that, the form clear is fairly straightforward because as we are doing in the form submit already, we are just replacing the current project with a project identity. The last bit is form input. I have modified the form input to take in a field or a target field and the payload. So that needs to be mapped into our current project object. And that happens like this. We take in the payload as a form input payload object, and then we'll take the current project from our Redux state. We'll check which the which target is within our form input and depending on the target will modify or we will create a new new copy of the current project and then update the current project within our redux state this is fairly straightforward so we just check which the target is and then modify the actual value of our current project if the target doesn't match, we'll return the same current project that we already obtained from the Redux state. That is all of the reducers. So the last bit is to actually map those actions to our router component and start dispatching those actions so our reducer can do its job. We'll create a Lambda within our connect function call. This lambda takes in a dispatch function and uh, an underscore, which in this case will be our router component props. So the props that we would be passing in into our um, router component manually. In this case, we won't be passing in anything. The return type from here is another JS object and we can add the type params in here. So the type is a router component and props and therefore we have the ability to do type safe mapping of our update action, submit action and clear action. The update action, it takes in a lambda or actually all of these takes in, take in a lambda. So if we take a look at the clear action first, because that is the most straightforward, we'll pass in a lambda that calls the dispatch function and then passes in the Redux action object with action type form clear. We also want to call the invoke method of our action type because the dispatch function takes in a standard JavaScript object instead of a Kotlin object. The submit action is very similar. So we are just calling the dispatch function in this case, we are passing in a payload and the payload is uh, the value that we are passing in into this function that we are binding our submit action. In this case, the function is called with a current project. So the it value of form submit is the current project. The last bit we want to do is create the update action and this lambda takes in two fields first is target and the second one is value and we do the same thing we'll call form input action type and pass in payload of target and value 
with that we can start the application and jump into our browser so let's take a look at how that action handles on the front end here we have the form available for us and we have done the initial hash change what, what which happens when we actually come into the page if we start typing in here you can see that every single type invokes a form input action and therefore modifies the actual state of our current project if we add few other fields in here as well and then see what happens when we click the submit button you can see that the form submit app action has happened the action itself is form submit and the payload is our project that we mapped in and the state has changed so the project list now contains one individual project object and if we go to the list view you can see that the project has appeared into the list this way we can map all the dispatched actions from our redux store into our react components and modify the store state by using a reducer function that maps the action type into an actual modification of the store